Now that we've looked at the art and architecture thesaurus, let's look at something similar, the thesaurus for graphic materials, which is a product out of the Library of Congress instead of the Getty this time. Um, the Thesaurus for Graphic Materials, TGM, is like art and architecture in that, first of all, obviously, it's a thesaurus, which means it's a controlled vocabulary. And second, it's a set of terms to describe art objects. The scope of TGM and art and architecture are different, though. Art and architecture is intended to allow you to describe literally any kind of made object. Any kind of artifact can be described using art and architecture. And TGM, the scope is, I think, fairly obvious, just graphic materials, pictures, images, and the like. So let's take a look at TGM. Now uh, you can download the entire TGM in either XML or as a text file, but we're not going to do that just yet. We'll look at the text file later. The XML rendering is of course, well, the text file is as well, but they're, they're quite long. Like art and architecture, TGM is an enormous hierarchy. So let's back that up. Um, instead, we're going to search TGM because unlike art and architecture, there is, as far as I'm aware, no browse functionality. So we will search and let's search for, let's say ships because ships are cool. We get a set of terms back, 139 results. This looks like pretty much any search engine, um, except instead of objects on the web, what's being returned is values in this thesaurus. So let's simply click on the first one, ships. And what we get here is a record describing this value ships. So term ships. Facet note, we'll come back to facets later. Scope note for large seagoing vessels, etc. What is the scope of the term ships? What does that mean in the context of this thesaurus? Used for steamships. In other words, don't use the term steamships to describe objects. Use the term ships instead. Ships is used for steamships. Broader term vessels. So we have the broader term and there are some child terms, one of which is ships. And narrower terms, cargo ships, galleys, hospital ships, light ships, etc., Noah's Ark, so ships itself has a bunch of children, and those are those values. So think back to unit one, when we talked about the structure of a thesaurus and the fact that it's a hierarchy, in other words, a family tree or an organization chart, right? You can represent a hierarchy this way. And if we scroll down a little bit further, we also see related terms. So vessels is the parent and we have ships and we have sibling terms to ships, which include, the sibling terms include things like blockade running, that's fun, boats, crow's nests, etc., etc. So we have the broader term, and if this is ships, we have the narrower terms, and then we have the related terms, which are the siblings of ships. Let's click on, let's say, sailing ships. One of the child terms of ships, let's click on sailing ships and look at that thesaurus term. And here we have a list of search results. By clicking on sailing ships, what we did was essentially perform a canned search and got one result. We click on sailing ships 
and we see another record for the term sailing ships, broader term ships. Sailing ships itself has some narrower terms, clipper ships, slave ships, Viking ships, etc. Let's look at pictures with this index term. So if I click this link, what we're going to see is a list of items in the Library of Congress's collection that have in their metadata record the subject sailing ships. So let's just for the sake of this example look at this first one, the captured rebel privateer Florida. I don't know what collection from the Library of Congress this is in, it doesn't matter, but let's look at this particular record. The title of this item is the captured rebel privateer, etc. Date created 1864, medium, wood engraving, etc., etc. Subjects, sailing ships. We get more specific, not just sailing ships, but American sailing ships, and even more specific than that, 1860 to 1870. But the point is, one of the subjects for this object has the term sailing ships in it. So let's go back to the term sailing ships. Now, I said earlier that you can download the entire TGM as a XML or a text file. So let's look at that text file now. And what we have here is that value sailing ships, broader term ships, narrower term clipper ships, slave ships, Viking ships, etc. And we get other terms, sailing cards, whatever that is sailors. So each of these is a term and that list, facet, bt, nt, etc. are all represented there. So this text file is intended both to be human readable but also to be computer parsable, the XML file even easier to parse automatically. Let's talk about the facet here. TGN has facets like art and architecture and the facet here is the object facet. So object is the top level category and the set of terms under objects is a very deep hierarchy. So under object, we get equipment. Under that, we have vehicles. Under that, we have vessels. Under that, we have ships. Under ships, of course, we have sailing ships, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So like the art and architecture thesaurus, we have a very deep hierarchy of terms in the object facet and in the other facets. We've now described two thesauri, art and architecture and TGN, for describing things in the universe of art. The scope of these two are different. Art and architecture, as I've said, is for all concepts related to all art forms. Anything that's made by human hand can be described in using art and architecture. Thesaurus for graphic materials is only for concepts related to images and graphics, obviously. The point is that you can choose the controlled vocabulary that works for you, given the types of objects you're describing, you know, your particular user communities, requirements, et cetera, et cetera. One's from the Getty, one's from the Library of Congress. That doesn't make a whole lot of difference either way. They're just two organizations that both have very large collections of art objects. So obviously they have a vested interest in creating some 
controlled vocabularies to govern how things are described at their institutions, but a lot of work went into art and architecture and the source of graphic materials, so they've made those controlled vocabularies public. If you have an element set like the CDWA or choose your element set, you can then go on and choose the set of values that work for you.